Hey guys, welcome back to Get Smart with Rory. Still uh, not settled into the new space, but this was too big of news to not do live. Physics as we know it might be a little broken. Highly anticipated news from the Fermilab experiment has called into question what is known as the standard model of particle physics. To understand these findings, we need a bit of background. The standard model was adopted in the 1970s to explain the composition of the universe at the quantum level. The word atom comes from Greek atomos, meaning indivisible, and for a long time people thought that that was the atom. The atom was the smallest unit that matter could be. But I think that almost everybody today is familiar with electrons, protons, neutrons, and if you're more into physics, you probably know about quarks, maybe bosons or leptons. Today, we split the smallest particles that we know of into two major categories. Fermions, which make up all of matter as we know it, and bosons, also sometimes known as virtual particles, which are carriers of information. You're probably familiar with at least one boson, that is the photon which carries the electromagnetic force. From these, on a quantum level, every aspect of physics is explained. Electromagnetic repulsion, what holds atoms together, everything, every particle, every force. And notably, the standard model of physics can predict hitherto unencountered particles, particles which we've never seen experimentally before. We successfully predicted the existence of and several properties of the W and Z bosons, gluons, up quark, charmed quark, and the Higgs boson before any of them were formally discovered. The Higgs boson was kind of the last missing piece until its discovery in 2012. On one hand, it's a kind of painful theory of physics because it's very complicated. It involves complex math with 19 terms, an amount which many people have noted seems like, well, a lot, and also a kind of arbitrary number. But on the other hand, it's a very beautiful theory of physics because using just a little bit of experimental data combined with simple mathematical equations, we're able to predict on a quantum level, what the universe should look like, what properties, what particles exist without having actually discovered them. And for the most part, later experiments hold up and we see that, yeah, the particles we predicted are basically exactly what the standard model says they'll be. So that's the standard model of physics in a nutshell. Now, among all of these fundamental particles, there's one in particular we need to focus in on, the muon. It's a little bit less well known. It's basically like a giant electron, a negatively charged particle which we find orbiting atoms. But it's 200 times larger than an electron and very unstable. Usually it decays after just two microseconds. It was discovered in 1936 after being created by cosmic rays interacting with the Earth's atmosphere, and scientists at the time really had no idea what to do with it. Anyway, two recent experiments involving the muon gave unexpected results. Specifically, in 2001, the Brookhaven National Lab measured the magnetic moment of the muon, and they got a number which was higher than they anticipated. Rather than just accepting the results, researchers went back and looked for more data on this, going to the Fermilab and collecting 21 times the data, which should give a more than 21 times more precise answer. And once again, the data showed that the muon's magnetic field was higher than expected. How much higher exactly? 
Well, it turns out that the standard model is able to predict what the muon's magnetic field should be to a very high precision, about one part in a billion. The standard number, which has been accepted for what the magnetic field of a muon should be, is uh, 0 0.00116591810. Meanwhile, the experimental value between these two tests was 0 0.00116592061. I'll highlight the difference for you here. Overall, it's about a 0.1% difference. But once again, we believe the standard model's specificity for the muon's magnetic field to be 1 times 10 to the negative 9, 1 in a billion. That's really, really significant. 1 1,000th one difference compared to that it matters. The scientific community usually requires a certainty of five sigma, or five standard deviations, to announce a new discovery. It takes a lot to say that you have physics which has never been seen before, particularly if it's changing old physics. These experiments combined have a sigma of about 4.2. Put another way, that's saying that there's about a 1 in 40,000 chance that these experiments were just a fluke. There's always some uncertainty with physics. It could be that the uncertainty just lined up to make these experimental results invalid. But for a discovery to be considered fact, or really a discovery, the scientific community requires that we have a precision of 1 in 3.5 million. That really any fluke is extraordinarily unlikely. Separately, at CERN, researchers have been smashing particles into each other. That is what CERN does, after all. And in one of these experiments, they took two bottom quarks and bombarded them into each other at high speeds. The results of this collision should produce an equal number of electrons and muons, but over thousands of collisions, they saw that, for whatever reason, quite a few more electrons were being produced, about a 15% discrepancy. And again, it could just be chance. If I flip a coin a thousand times, there is some probability that every single one is going to be heads. But as you flip more and more coins, you expect the average to come closer and closer to the true probability. For a coin flip, as with this experiment actually, you would expect the probability to be about 50-50. The certainty of this experiment, by the way, is also 3.1 sigma. So there are a few possible explanations to these results, which we will cover from least to most exciting. The trivial solution, of course, being that the experiments are wrong. They messed up something. The results are, as said, a fluke. They just had random chance work against them. And as we collect more experimental data, these results are going to be overturned. Another option would be that our predicted values for the muon's magnetic field are incorrect. Immediately following the Fermilab results, in fact, an international team of scientists made new calculations for that field strength. Professor Zoltan Fodar, one of the lead researchers, notes that the existing theory for estimating the strength of the muon's magnetic field relied on experimental electron-positron annihilation measurements. Their new theoretical value for that muon's magnetic field was calculated by simulating the particle using mathematical models they had built from the ground up and millions of CPU hours. And it's a much closer fit to the results of the Fermilab experiments than the previous theorized number. Or option three, that there's physics we don't know. I mean, obviously there is physics we don't know. That's why we keep studying physics. But this would be something a little bigger than that because 
the standard model usually is very accurate. When we're looking at this muon strength, what would be implied is that there's some force or particle which not only have we never discovered in the past, we've never even had reason to theorize about its existence. That there's some small unknown fluctuation in the quantum foam. That is a theory that on the quantum level, space-time isn't perfectly smooth. That the overlap of various quantum wave functions is producing short-lived particles in what should be vacuum, but if you know a little bit about quantum chemistry, quantum physics, you understand that particles are kind of nebulous in where they are at any given time, and at a certain temperature, you should be able to see the existence of particles that basically are popping in and out of existence just because their wave function is saying that maybe they're there to a certain degree. It's complicated, don't worry about it too much, but the thing is that one of the reasons the standard model has been so accurate historically is that it accurately predicts that this particle is going to be here to this degree at this temperature and that particle is going to be here at this other degree at the temperature and it's able to use all of those interactions to very accurately predict once again how everything interacts with each other and if we're getting this new force or field whatever that's interacting with the muon's magnetic moment, that's something that we're not accounting for, and that's huge. If this new particle is interacting with the muon's magnetic field in this way, well, what is this new particle? What does it do? How does it interact with other particles? Does it decay into others? Does it decay from others? Does it interact with other fields? What if it works on a muon in this way, how will it interact with other particles? It basically is just breaking open this whole line of questions into how physics works at the quantum level, which once again, we didn't think there was another particle. We knew about, as I said much earlier, the W boson, Z boson, Higgs boson, the up quark, charmed quark, gluons. We knew all of these particles existed. We had theoretical reasons to believe that basically half of the fundamental particles existed before we'd see them in a lab. And now we have this new particle, be it a boson or fermion, that potentially, if it exists, we had no reason to believe it did. We have no knowledge about it. And yeah, physicists are pretty excited about this. I think it says basically everything you need to know about the physics community that nothing excites us more than having a big open question like this. If you're interested in any of this stuff, I'm going to link a whole bunch of papers and various resources to get a little bit of knowledge about the standard model of particle physics in the description down below. As always, if you enjoyed the content, leave a like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel out so that I keep making more content like this. And until next time, see ya.